In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the equation of a linear function, which is in slope-intercept form, and how to change that into general form. So here's the equation of a function in slope-intercept form, y equals 3 over 4x minus 5. Um, so the slope is 3 quarters, and the y-intercept is negative 5. We're being asked to rewrite the equation in general form. Okay, so I'll keep track of uh, what we're doing in blue on the left, and then I'll do it in black on the right. So, we essentially need to get everything over onto one side of the equation, and we need to make sure we get rid of all the fractions, and then we may need to make sure the a term is positive, and a is the coefficient on x. Um, it's sort of easiest to get rid of the fractions first, and then you're, just, you're done with the fractions. So we'll do that first. Um, the only fraction in here is 4, quarters, three-fourths. Um, so if we multiply everything by four, we'll get rid of the fractions. If you had two fractions, one for the slope and one for the y-intercept, you'd multiply by the lowest common denominator. Okay. So we multiply by four to clear the fractions. We just take what we've got, uh, 4 times y equals 4 times 3 quarters x minus 5. Okay, now we simplify. So here we just have 4y. Now here we have 4 times 3 fourths. Um, so there's a few ways to look at it. One way is to say, well, we do have 4 times 3 divided by 4. So these two 4s undo each other. Or we could go off in the corner of the page somewhere and say, well, 4 times 3 quarters. So remember to multiply fractions. If you've got a whole number, you might put that over 1. Then multiply the numerators, the tops, and multiply the denominators, and then simplify which is the same as if we just say, consider that these two are undoing each other. So we have 3x minus, and then 4 times 5 gives us minus 20. Oh uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have crossed out that 4 there, because if you cross it out, it might, you might forget to do 4 times negative 5. Okay, so we have 4y equals 3x minus 20. And now I'm going to um, put all the terms on one side. So rearrange to equal zero, just because that's what general form looks like. Um, and sometimes you want to put it on one side, and sometimes you want to put it on the other. And the way you decide is you look at, we need this number, this coefficient here to be positive, and it's positive right now. So what we'll do is we'll move everything onto the right side. Um, if it was negative, we'd want it to be positive, so if we added it to both sides, it would become positive on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to move everything onto the right side, so I'll just subtract 4y from both sides. And I know I want it to be the x term, and then the y term, and then the constant term, so I'll put my negative 4y right in the middle here. So that's the new thing I did. And then I'll simplify. 3x minus 4y minus 20. And then this is a little detailed, but it's nice to write that this is equal to 0 and put the 0 on the right-hand side. So I'll just flip sides here. So I have 3x minus 4y minus 20 equals 0. So to check, everything is uh, integers, and my a value, which is the coefficient on x, is 3, which is a positive number. Okay, so that's it. We Just to review, uh, the first thing it's best to do is to clear the fractions right away by multiplying by the lowest common denominator. Um, multiply both sides by that, and then make sure you uh, distribute whatever that, like for example the 4 here, we distribute that times both terms. Um, then group everything on one side. Choose the side uh, based on the fact that you want your a term, your coefficient on x, to be positive. 
And then just write it, uh, once you've got it all done, write it so that the zero is on the right-hand side. Okay, good luck with it.